Cleanse me from sin, O Lord God, wash me with his branches. Cleanse me from guilt, and I shall be clean as the new snow. Have mercy on me, O my God, according to your great compassion. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Cleanse me from sin, O Lord God. Wash me with his branches. Cleanse me from guilt, and I shall be clean as the new snow. Sing together, the angel Gabriel from heaven came. Jesus. 
who forgives us our sins. Mercy endures, he endures forever. forever. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to, to whom, whom all hearts, hearts are, are open, all desires, desires known, known, and, and from, from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the, the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, Spirit that, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Father, hear the prayer of those who seek your peace. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you, to one another, and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth, that, that we have sinned by our own fault, in thought, word and deed, by what, by what we have done and by, by what we have left, left undone. Holy. by his grace and nourish you with his blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers and absolve you from your offences for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We beseech you, O Lord, pour your grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of your Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion we may be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. God of compassion, be close to those who are ill, afraid, or in isolation. In their loneliness, be their consolation. In their anxiety, be their hope. In their darkness, be their light. Through him who suffered alone on the cross, but reigns with you in glory, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
the Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals, that you weary my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child, and shall bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. For the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
The second reading is taken from the Epistle to the Hebrews, chapter 10, beginning at the fourth verse. It is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings, you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, see God, I have come to do your will, O God, in the scroll of the book it is written of me. When he said above, you have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings, these are offered according to the law. Then he added, see, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And it is by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. For the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. good news of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory, Glory to, you, to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. For the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I wonder, are you afraid at the moment? 
life seems far less certain than we usually imagine it is. Around the world, people are dying in their thousands. We cannot meet together to worship. We cannot touch our friends. And none of us knows if or when we too will catch the virus. Yes, there is much cause to be afraid. Mary too had many reasons to be afraid. A young, unmarried woman living in occupied territory, encountering an angel and being asked by God to bear God's son and then to deal with the consequences of living in the world unexpectedly pregnant. She could reasonably have expected to be stoned to death. Yes, Mary had many reasons to be afraid. One of the things I think is most wonderful about this passage is that in the midst of circumstances to which the normal human response would be fear, God's word is, do not be afraid. This is the most repeated command in the Bible. I haven't counted it myself, but I've read that there are 365 different verses that say, do not be afraid one for every day of the year. Here are some of them. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not forsake you or fail you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Do not worry about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And Jesus said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. The prevalence of verses like this tells us two things. Firstly, it tells us that people are afraid. It's natural to fear many things that are happening around us, and it's fairly common to fear things that haven't happened and probably never will. People have always been afraid, and they always will. The second thing the huge number of Bible verses about fear tells us is that God knows we are afraid and wants to release us from our fear. To give you another verse that we say at the conclusion of Monday morning prayer each week, God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of self-discipline. God understands human fear and God wants us to live without being controlled by that fear. However, to live without being controlled by fear is not the same as not ever feeling fear. As someone who wasn't Kipling once wrote, if you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs, you probably haven't really grasped the situation. Fear in certain situations is an appropriate response. It can keep us and those we love safe. Those who in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic refuse to take it seriously or to behave with appropriate care risk their own lives and the lives of thousands of other people. There is great value in being appropriately afraid. It shows that we are paying attention to the possible cost involved in whatever is before us. 
People who fear, feel no fear for themselves or others are not loving, but self-indulgent, arrogant, haughty. Yes, fear can become out of control. It can take over our lives, and that is not God's will for us. But fear can also give us an opportunity to humble our hearts and to seek God's will. To stop for a moment and see our lives, not just in this frightening instant, but in the fullness of God's love for each of us. A love that numbers every hair on our heads and knows our needs before we speak them. When God says, do not be afraid, God is not telling us we should never feel fear or that we should pretend that things are other than they are. God is definitely not telling us that we don't need to take the action we can to preserve and honour life. That's why I'm talking to this camera while you're sitting at home. What God is telling us is that our lives are too precious to be ruled by fear. God calls us to live lives that are anchored in God's love, a love that transcends all human circumstances and that remains with us no matter what. That love can give us the courage to face whatever may come and the knowledge that, regardless of outcome, we are safe in God's love that overcomes death. When God's angel came to Mary, the first thing she was given was a clear picture of her identity before God. Greetings, favoured one. The Lord is with you. Mary found this perplexing, but I wonder if it was this reminder of who she was that enabled her to listen and accept the rest of the angel's message. Our only lasting identity is the one we find in our relationship with God. Ultimately, nothing else matters. Not our financial assets, not our marital status, not our gender or sexuality, not our social connections, not our earthly authority, nothing except who we are in relationship with God. I'm sure Mary must have feared what the consequences of this unexpected pregnancy would be. But she trusted that she was safe in God regardless of what would unfold. The voice of God speaking through the angel did not say to her, do not be afraid because everything's going to be okay. Instead, the voice said, do not be afraid for you have found favour with God. So trusting that, Mary said yes to God, knowing that she had a part to play in God's plan and that whatever that meant for her, she was willing. I wonder what would have happened if Mary had focused on her fear that day rather than on God's message. What if she had not believed that her true identity was to be found in God? What if instead she had focused on the identity the world gave her, a poor, unmarried girl in a patriarchal society? What if she had not listened to God's voice, but to the voice of fear whispering in her ear and persuading her that to say yes would be madness? If that had happened, I imagine the angel would still have delivered God's message. The Annunciation would still have taken place. But the Incarnation would not. The Incarnation required Mary not to allow her legitimate fear of the future to determine who she would be. The Incarnation required Mary's willing yes to God. Yes in the midst of fear, but safe in the identity given to her by God. 
yes, there is much to fear in our world at the moment. And we are more conscious of it than usual. Almost certainly, people we love will die from this virus. And we will grieve them. And we will weep and be afraid for others we love. But I hope that like Mary, as we live in fearful times, we will not allow fear to rule our hearts because our hearts belong only to the eternal God who has overcome death. I hope that when God whispers to our hearts, we will not allow fear to define who we will be, but that we will say yes to God and allow something new to be brought to birth in and through us. Do not be afraid. The Lord is with you, and nothing will be impossible for God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us together affirm the faith of the Church. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the, On the third, third day, day he, he rose, rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray to God, who alone makes us dwell in safety. For all who are affected by coronavirus, through illness or isolation or anxiety, that they may find relief and recovery. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear, hear us. us. For those who are guiding our nation at this time and shaping national policies, that they make wise decisions. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear, hear us. us. For doctors, nurses, and medical researchers, that through their skill and insights, many will be restored to health. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. us. For the vulnerable and the fearful, for the gravely ill and the dying, especially those known to us, Jenny, Rob, Ross, Alice, and Sue, that they may know your comfort and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. us. We give you thanks for your servants in every generation, especially for Mary of Nazareth and John, the beloved disciple. 
overshadow us too with your power and your purpose, so your love may grow in us, that with Mary and all who delight to do your will, we may come at last to dwell in your eternal presence. Hear our prayers this day for Albert Taylor, Florence Creighton, Nancy Allen, Enid Sabine, Ian Harrison, and Gladys Penwarden, whose anniversaries occur at this time. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. us. We commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, in your mercy, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. Amen. 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 Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. you. Sing together the hymn, Behold, a rose is grown.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. Almighty God, so fill us with your grace that we in all things may accept your holy will and with the Virgin Mary full of grace rejoice in your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be here with you. And, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, we give you thanks and praise that the Virgin Mary heard with faith the message of the angel and by the power of your Holy Spirit conceived and bore the word made flesh. From the warmth of her womb to the stillness of the grave, he shed a life in human form. In him new light has dawned upon the world, and you have become one with us, that we might become one with you in your glory, earth kingdom. Therefore, earth unites with heaven to sing a new song of praise. We to join with angels and archangels as they proclaim your glory without end. creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, by the working of the Holy Spirit. Great and merciful Father, we ask you to send down your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the eve of his passion and death, while at table with those he loved, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Our 
After supper, he took a cup of wine and again giving you thanks. He gave it to his disciples saying, this cup is God's new covenant sealed in my blood. Drink from this, all of you, to remember me. Great is the mystery of faith. Father most holy, we celebrate the memory of Christ your Son, whom you led through suffering and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection and a place at your right hand. Lord, open our eyes to the needs of all. Inspire with words and deeds your church that we may comfort those who labour and are burdened. Keep our service of others faithful to the example and command of Christ. Let your church be a living witness to truth and freedom, to justice and peace, that all people may be lifted up by the hope of a world made new through Jesus Christ, your Son. Be mindful of our departed brothers and sisters and all who have left this world in your friendship. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the mother of our Lord, Saint John, the apostles, and all your saints. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Remember us in your kingdom and hear us as we pray. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, your will, will be done, done on earth, earth as in heaven. heaven. Give, give us today our daily bread. bread. Forgive, forgive us our sins as, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save, save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. evil. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom the, power, the power, and the glory are yours, now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body. For we, for all, we all share, share in one, one bread. bread. of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, Lord I, I am not, not worthy, worthy to receive, receive you, but only, only say the word, word and, and I, I shall be healed.
Lord be with you. And also, also with you. you. Let us pray. God Most High, whose handmaid bore the Word made flesh, we thank you that in this sacrament of our redemption you visit us with your Holy Spirit and overshadow us by your power. Strengthen us to walk with Mary the joyful path of obedience and so to bring forth the fruits of holiness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Holy God, we offer ourselves to you as, as a living sacrifice, sacrifice through, through Jesus, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Send, Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work, and work to your praise and, and glory. Amen. We sing together of the Father's love begotten.
what a joy it is to join with you all this morning. Thank you for those who have uh, helped this morning. It's a privilege to be able still to gather in St. John's and to enjoy such beautiful worship together. And I hope those at home have found this a moment of, of good worship uh, where you too can bring your hearts, raise your praises to God uh, who created and still cares for us as much as God ever has and always will. Just to say at 2 p.m. today we have beautiful jazz piano being played live from St. John's by Tim Stevens. I do encourage you to um, go back to your iPads or your computers at 2 o'clock and to enjoy that uh, moment of beautiful music. Also at uh, 6 p.m. tonight uh, sung even song of a, of a certain kind. Um, it'll be worth just logging into that to see how we make that work. Let's pray for God's blessing upon us all. Christ, the Son of God, born of Mary, fill you with his grace to trust your promises and to obey his will. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit be upon you, remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen. Amen. Amen.